Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's October the 23rd and we're looking at the last chapter of Paul's letter to Titus, chapter 3, and beginning at verse 8 to 11, so just a few verses. Uh, sorry, verse 8 all the way down to verse 15, beg your pardon. This is a faithful saying, says Paul, and these things I will that thou that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works now that's my password he says these things are good and profitable unto men but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain a man that is a heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject, knowing that he that is such is subverteth and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Let's just talk about that second part first and then we'll come back to my password um, at the end. He talks about the arguments, the issues that are constantly a bugbear to God's people. He talks about foolish questions. These are the sorts of questions that people go on and on and on about to no profit. And you know what they are. You've only got to go into one of the um, chat rooms on the internet or one of the Facebook groups to discover what Christians talk about. And many times they are uh, foolish questions that just have, they appear to have no answer and no solution and also genealogies that's a particular favorite of the Jewish people and contentions there are issues that are always contentious and strivings about the law so that would be a, a favorite playground for the Pharisees arguments and strivings about little points of law they are unprofitable and vain and when we talk about strivings of the law this would include all legalistic thinking so very often in churches and in assemblies there's issues and it might be about the color of the communion cloth it might be about the book that we use to sing from it might be about whether the bread should be cut up or whether it's to be broken up these are just contentions they they're strivings about law and they are unprofitable and vain and then Paul says that a person that is a heretic is a person that is divisive he says a person that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject we are not expected to bang our heads against the wall forever they need to be told firmly and in love but in a strong rebu rebuke that they're to stop this unprofitable and vain speaking and they're to be told twice every person needs to have an opportunity to think again and to apologize and to back down we all need to have the opportunity to be dealt with in kindness but after the first and the second admonition if they are persistent in being um, contentious and speaking about things that are unprofitable in vain then they are to be rejected knowing Paul says that he that is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself so heresy then and division as well is not just about how men think it's how men live you see doctrine and practice are not separate issues they are one issue and if a person has incorrect thinking in certain issues then they will have incorrect living he says they are subverted and they are sinning and they are condemned of themselves the reason why they're condemned of themselves is because having been told twice about this behavior then they are then and they are determined to continue in division then they are signing their own excommunication they are signing their own uh, rejection now let's come back to the early part 
which is where my password is. Paul says, this is a faithful saying. Now he's said this so many times and almost invariably these faithful sayings are faithful. They are great proverbs. They could be inscribed upon the walls of our churches. And this particular one says, it is a faithful saying and these things I will that thou constantly that thou affirm constantly. So I don't know about you but in our preaching we need to take the faithful sayings of scripture and we need to say them a lot. We are to affirm them constantly. So we need to find out what they are first of all. We need to go through scripture, find the faithful sayings and then we need to preach them and we need to talk about them a lot. But this particular one is this that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Now the question we need to ask is what is the good works? Well often we think of good works in two different ways. Now I looked this up just before I uh, begun this video and it is the Greek word ergon which means effort, it means labor, it means work okay and that can mean our deeds it can mean our rightful employment okay something which is accomplished by labor and by hard work in fact the word ergon is the base for the word ergonomics which is the study of human labor um, but it doesn't just include he's put the word good there and it doesn't just mean your daily employment it can also mean any work that you do that's good and I would like to Im apply it in two ways first of all there's what's called honest employment Christians need to be honestly employed there's nothing like honest bread there's nothing like earning your crust that's very important for all of us but also I might apply it in this way there is work to do for God and that might be labor that might be hard that might be a struggle that might put us out and that might tire us but it's good and all Christians need to ask themselves two questions first of all am I employed in doing good and that might be in a daily employment or am I employed in doing good for the Lord and that might not be your employment that might be your service for the Lord there are hundreds thousands millions of people that live next door to all of us in our streets near our churches they need to see our good works because when they see our good works they will glorify the Father in heaven. God bless you. Look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like if you like. God bless you. Talk to you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye for now.